Where to start, Dirk? You were 2 0 down there. Bradley's playing absolutely incredible. You must have thought that was the end of the road for you in this tournament. Nope. <clears throat> I, will, I, I don't ever think about what my play, opponent is doing because I know what I can do. And I was just thinking, just start playing your best game. But it didn't feel my, like my best game at all. And uh, I think he played better than he did this year, so he played better than I expected to. But I played way worse than I expected I would play and I don't know, I make myself so angry because I'm I'm practicing the best arts I ever done. I'm playing the best for, form I ever did. And I, the way I played it was like, what are you doing? You know? Every dart I threw I was like it could be a five, a, a one, a twenty, a trouble twenty, a trouble five. And then eventually I make myself so angry and eventually stop playing well as well. Well, we've seen this happen many times before. Big name players and fancied players at the William Hill World Championship, they get in trouble. That's when they're able to find their best stuff. That's actually quite a good thing, isn't it, the way you, you turn that around? I don't know how good it was. I have to see the stats back, but still think I didn't play my best game, but I started playing close to my better game. And I knew from the start, like, if I put him under pressure with a 180, 140s or whatever, and he'll feel the pressure, and I couldn't do it. And I knew, I've seen him practicing, if he's not under pressure, he's very good. Because <laughs> I've seen him practicing, and he was like 180, 140, 180, 140. I was like, oh, you're good. But I was like, if, you, if I put you under pressure, show me how good you are. You know, not that you're not good, but show it if you can do it under pressure. And, I didn't put him under pressure, so I wasn't surprised that he played well. To run away with the game with nine legs on the spin after being in real trouble, that must feel amazing, particularly compared to what happened when we saw you on that stage a few years ago against Barn. Yeah, it was in my head as well. I wanted to put something right after that one because people remind you of that and they kept on reminding me a lot this weeks. And it was like, I felt amazing and you... I got reminded a lot of times and I felt a bit, well, not desperate, but you feel like, can we, it's five years ago, why are you still reminding me of it? So, it's, so my, like, I wanted to play and, well, I, I got a lot of reminders, I think over 50, and then, then you think, yeah, well, it's a thing, you know? I, I, I want to make it right, I want to play well in the World Championship, because the last, the only, Thing people remind me of is the 180 on the, even though I thought they will forget after my final in the Grand Prix, they didn't forget. So they still remind you, so you want to play well on this stage, so you won't remind, be reminded of that. Well, you've given people a lot of things to remember you for so far this year. Some super performances, your Grand Prix run, your first win here, and your walk-on, which I didn't think could get any weirder than the dancing and the hardcore music, but offering everybody an aubergine is a new one for this sport. Did you see the Lion King? Yeah. I'll give you the aubergine. I think we'll leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> At 2-1, did you think you'd got your man because you started to impose yourself on the stage and you relaxed and Bradley didn't seem the same? when that surge come from you, like he just couldn't get back at you? I was never relaxed, to be honest. <clears throat> but I did see the pressure on his arms. You know, well, like I said in previous interview, uh, like, if I put him under pressure, he won't play his best game. But if I don't put him under pressure, he's a very good player. And at some point, I managed to put him under pressure and you saw the darts were 140, 180, it was 85, 66 sometimes. So, yeah, I was happy to put him under pressure and then at some point I think, like, keep it going and we'll win this match. If you had have lost this game, would it, would it have undone all the good work you put in for the rest of the year? Yeah, because I don't mind about all the other events. I've said it all year. It's all about the World Championship. My goal was to make the World Championship and then win at least one game. Um, if I would have lost this one, um, it would still have been a good year, but I would have been very disappointed about the year because I didn't win this game, even though 
I must say, he played very good in the first two sets. So, if someone plays very good, you can't moan okay. if you lose. Up next, Rob Cross. Is he one of the seeds again that if you put him under pressure, that he's going to panic because he hasn't played well this year, do you think? <laughs> well, to be honest, I remember two years ago, he wasn't in his best form. Everyone thought Jeffrey Desjuan would beat him. Jeffrey Desjuan lost with 107 average. <laughs> so, uh, thinking about that, I need to play very well to beat Rob Cross, otherwise, there's no chance. There's the confidence there. Do you believe you can go on and lift this trophy on January the 3rd? I don't think about that. I look, I look at it for game by game. And um, seeing how I made three quarterfinals in the last four events, I want to make another quarterfinal. But apart from that, you're playing with some top players in the world. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. Cheers. Doug, you talk about people reminding you of five years ago. Do you think people will now forget now you've got your first? first nah, they won't. But I think it's a bit annoying. Because people remind you of your bad times and, well, they probably like it, but it's five years ago and, you may, and, and this year I've been so well and you think, why do you want to remind me of a bad thing? What, what do you want to accomplish with that? Do you want me to think about it and play worse? Or do you want to make a joke because it's not funny? Because it's... It, it ruined like at least three years of my darts career, that one, because I was playing well. I made, I think I made top 55 in one year, very good, without a tour card. And people start, keep, keep on reminding you of that thing that, well, not ruined your life, but ruined your dart life for three to four years. And I'm finally doing well this year because I made a lot of investments in mental coaching because also because of that thing that's the the biggest thing that uh made me play not good let's say like that and then people think they're funny reminding you of that and then i get why they do it or but it's like you, you don't know what an impact it was so, so in your mind, are you a, a completely different dance player now than what you were five years ago? Yeah, I'm a completely different dance player, but in this game, it goes through my head as well. I, like, you wanted to show so badly that you're good on this stage. Because people only remind you of that bad thing on this stage. So some maybe I tried too hard, and when I was with my back against the ball, I could show what I can do, because I was with my back against the ball. Thank you very much for your time. No problem. Sure,